So what I wanted you to do is I want you to add to your slope notes. So you should already have notes that we talk about slope. You're going to add to them. You're going to add this formula and I'm gonna call it your favorite formula of all time because we use that so often. It says y equals mx plus b. This formula is called the slope intercept formula. You will use this over and over and over again when we're graphing lines. And so what we're gonna do with it right now is we're gonna use it to identify the slope and the y-intercept, okay? So the M is the letter that represents slope, okay? The B is the y-intercept. Now you're probably wondering what is a y-intercept? The y intercept, otherwise known as the B, is where the graph of the line crosses the Y axis, okay? So we will use that more when we're graphing, but today we're just identifying slope. And then on the other worksheet, we're identifying slope and slope intercept, okay? So the goal when you have an equation is that you wanna get that Y by itself. This is all I need in your notes right now. So now we're gonna look at the worksheet that we have to do, okay? This first worksheet reviews um, finding slope multiple ways. So remember we talked about how we're gonna have to find slope by um, looking at two points on a graph. We're gonna have to do it by having two ordered pairs and then we're gonna have to have to find the slope by an equation. So this first example right here gives us a graph. They have two points marked. Remember slope, is your rise over your run. Okay, so you're gonna put M equals. We're gonna find out how many we rise, rose and how many we ran. Okay, we went up one block. So one goes on the top, that's the rise. We went over one, two, three, three we ran. Then you have to remember, you have to ask yourself, if I was driving a little matchbox car from left to right, am I going uphill or downhill? This one's downhill, so this is a negative. One third is my answer. Okay, find two points, find your rise over your run, ask if it's negative or positive. That's how you do it with the graph. Okay, now we'll look at an ordered pair. You guys should be good at this. We did a whole bunch of them, um, especially with slope bingo. So remember M equals change in Y over change in X. Now remember that's already in your notes. So M equals Y minus Y. So I'm gonna do 10 minus 14 over eight minus negative seven. Two minuses right next to each other, connect up, make a big plus. 10 minus 14 is negative four. Eight plus seven is 15. Does anything go into both four and 15? No, and there's only one negative sign, so we are good to go. So negative four fifteenths. Now remember, you're going to leave that as a fraction. Okay, just a little review. Remember, if zero is in the numerator, which is on top, then your answer is zero. If zero is in the denominator, which is on bottom, then that's undefined. You cannot divide by a zero, that is undefined. So a slope of that graph would, remember, be straight up and down. Okay, so that was two points. Now we have the equation. So if we're trying to find the slope of a line with the equation, we want it in our favorite form, which I just had written in our notes, is that y equals mx plus b. Okay, so y has to be by itself. And then m is the number in front of the x. Okay, 
So on number 17, is y by itself? Yep, y is already by itself. So we have y equals mx plus b, okay? So this would be like, so what's in front of the x? That negative five. So my m is negative five and my work is done. So remember, m is in front of the x when you have y by itself. So y is by itself here, so this should be an easy answer. Okay, 20 is a little tricky. You have to think x equals one. I don't have y by itself. I have to think, what is that graph? If I had to graph x equals one, it's saying that x is always one. So if I made like a little x, y chart, I could have any number be my y's because x is always one. So I could have zero, two, three. Then I could graph those points and see what kind of line that is and see what kind of slope that is. My hint to you is it's either going to be zero or it's going to be undefined. That's my hint. Okay, y is by itself on 23, y is by itself on 24. Then it switches gears on 25 and 26. Y is not by itself. We have to get y by itself. So remember, just like when we're solving um, equations, if I want to get y by itself, I always tell everybody, cover that up. How am I going to get rid of that positive 2x? Well, I have to subtract it or make it a negative, however you want to write that. Okay, that's now gone. So I have 3y equals 9 minus 2x. Y is still not by itself. Okay, y is not by itself yet. So I need to get rid of that three in front of the y. What's three doing to y? It's multiplying. What's the opposite of that? Dividing. If I divide by three, I have to divide by three on every single thing in that equation. So now I have y equals, because those three cancel each other out. Nine divided by three is three minus, and then I'm gonna leave that as a fraction, two thirds x. Now remember your m is the number in front of the x. What's in front of this x right here? A negative two thirds. So please don't forget your sign. And don't forget it's the number in front of the x. Now it sometimes like when I was solving it, I did not put that x in front of that number. So then I had to look for it. Okay. So you can go ahead and try on 26. Now, if those seemed a little shaky for you, that's okay because now you have this new worksheet right here. So this one says 2x plus 5y equals 10. And what you need to do is you need to solve and find both the m and the b. So we're actually gonna find the slope, which is what we just did in the last one, and we're gonna find the y-intercept. But finding the slope and y-intercept, so if I already have it in y equals mx plus b form, my m was that negative five, my b was negative one. So this is gonna go fairly simple for you. We have to get y by itself. Remember, we want it in our favorite form. And I always say my favorite form is y equals mx plus b. That's the goal, mx plus b. So I need to get y by itself. So how do I get rid of that two x? Well, I need to subtract it. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So now I'm left with five y, because those are gone equals 10 minus 2x. Okay, got to get rid of that 5. So I'm going to divide every single thing by that 5. Okay, I'm going to rewrite it on top here now. So I have y equals 10 divided by 5 is 2. And then minus, and I'm going to leave that as an ugly fraction, 2 fifths x. Now remember, your m is the number in front of your x. So m equals the negative 2 fifths, where b is the other number, which is 2. So I'm looking on the bottom for negative 2 fifths and 2. And I see it right here. So then I put in whatever letter is in front of this, which is an o. I see negative fifths and 2. So I put an o right there. OK, we'll do one more. This says 4x plus 3y equals 9. Okay, want to get y by itself, so I need to subtract that 4x. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So I'm left with 3y equals 9 minus 4x. Want to get y by itself, so I need to divide out that 3. 
on every single one. Okay, if you do not have enough room on this paper, you're more than welcome to use another sheet of paper. So you have y equals nine divided by three is three minus, and I'm gonna leave that four thirds x alone. Okay, remember m is the number in front of the x, so m is that negative four thirds, and my b is three. So I'm looking for negative four thirds and three. So negative four thirds and three, and then I put the letter N in front of it. Okay. So those should explain both worksheets.